All right, welcome back to the Tech Shack to another low quality video. So the past couple weeks I've done a bunch of wireless jobs and two of them I have set up a whole bunch of these CPEs. Actually not this model, the CPE 510s. I just did like six acres of Wi-Fi and when, by the end of the summer they're going to have over 25 acres covered in Wi-Fi. So far I've deployed four of the smaller 510 CPEs. But I've deployed dozens of these over the years. I have three actually on my property. Anytime I do a video on my home lab or on my Umada stack, I kind of just gloss over these and people have asked me time and time again, what's their range like? What's your actual performance like? Um, I've been running these for years. They are 100% reliable. I've had some that out in the winter time for five plus years now, 20 below um, Fahrenheit in the winter, 90 degree summers. And well, actually, this week we've had 100 degree days and had zero issues with those CPEs. So, in this video, we're gonna go over um, a couple of different offerings from TP Link and we're gonna go through the setup of setting up two of these as a point to point bridge. All right, so let's get on with it. All right, so right off the bat, you're going to notice only the 710 has a gigabit LAN port. So, no matter how good the signal strength is, the best you're going to get with the 210 and 510 is 100 megabit. The 710, while it's the best value, longest range, and best speed, is substantially larger and often fails the wife test, being seen as an eyesore. It's much larger than the 510s and resembles a small satellite dish. The 510 is smaller, less conspicuous, and even with most home internet in the area over 300 megabit, for guest houses and workshops, many of my clients find the 100 megabit is just good enough for those applications. The 710 failed my wife test, both of them, so both the main house and the other wife's cabin is linked back to the shack with 510s in direct line of sight of a single 710 in AP mode. The 710 is able to saturate both 510s 10100 ports and with internet starting in the shack can make sure both the house and the cabin cannot saturate all the bandwidth. For applications where 100 megabit isn't good enough and using the larger 710s isn't an option, Ubiquiti has a solution I often deploy. This CPE from Ubiquiti gets an honorable mention because it has a similar form factor to the 510 but it has a gigabit port. But it's only capable of 450 megabit. So while these are $100 each versus the 510s at $40 each, these can get you three times the speed thanks to the 510s 10100 port and lack of gigabit. However, the 710 is still $30 cheaper than this offering from Ubiquity and offers almost two times the speed at over eight times the range if you can put up with its looks. So it's still the best value offering from either company. As far as range goes, the rated range is more for a wireless ISP application. As far as my own personal experience, I've gotten two 710s successfully linked at 300 megabits per second real world speed at over a mile apart. So for um, building to building backhaul, especially on the same campus, same property, they're absolutely fantastic and you should have no problem getting the full 800 megabits out of a 710. The 710s by far are the easiest to point. The reflector makes them more forgiving if you're off by a small margin and the larger footprint gives you a larger target to point at in the distance. I find myself fine tuning the position of the 510s a lot more. I've had installations where the signal meter on the side of the 510 said it was full and perfect but a few fine adjustments almost doubled the actual real world speed tested speed but didn't affect the meter. So only rely on that if visibility of the other CPE is poor and you just want good enough speed. All right, so let's get these two 710s all set up. All right, so I got the IP address for this USB network card I use specifically for configuring these things um, already set up. So you have to manually configure your IP address. I'm um, running everything through this switch. This switch is awesome, little $45 switch with two and a half gig networking ports and then two 10 gig SFP plus ports. So I'll be doing a video on this switch and the eight port version very soon. All right, but on to this. So we're going to try and get this guy set up. I'm going to switch the screen capture. Hopefully the microphone in the laptop isn't completely terrible. Otherwise, I'll have to dub over everything. Default IP address is 192.168.0.254. Default username is admin and default password is admin.
this one is going to be put in access point mode now there's two options here that are missing from the quick setup that are available in the 510s that aren't available here and rather than re-explain what those options are I'm just gonna insert a video clip from a 510 setup video that I never finished so I got this one set up in AP mode, this one set up in client mode. Now if you've ever played um, with the Unify CPEs, that would have been called bridge mode in the Unify. However, in bridge mode is basically like a repeater, but they already have a repeater mode. The difference is the repeater mode just repeats the existing SSID and the bridge mode will let you create a new SSID to repeat the old SSID. Like these two should be the same setting with just a different drop down menu once you get into that setting, but whatever. Since by default all the CPE's web UI use the same IP address, I'm going to specify a different IP address for each one so I don't accidentally access the wrong one later and I know which one I'm accessing if I ever have to log back in. Since we are only using two 710s as a point to point link, then we're going to specify AC mode to get the best bandwidth. If we were going to have a mix of 710s and 510s, you'd want to make sure that you had AC and N enabled. Okay, so this guy is all configured as an access point. Now when this is deployed on site, this guy is going to be fed off the main router in the main house. And then it's going to feed this one in client mode that's going to eventually feed this switch in Jeffy's house so basically Jeffy built a tiny house on the same property as his parents and he wants to link his house and his parents house so they have access to his NAS and all that which is why he wanted to make sure he had close to a gigabit speed between the two buildings so now that this guy's configured let's get the other guy configured Oh, password same default IP address so I'll save from reshowing all that we're gonna put this one into client mode which in any other CPE universe would be called bridge mode but TP link has to be different we're gonna go ahead and scan and connect to that CPE 710 that we just set up in access point mode now the lock to AP mode is pretty handy if say you had a bunch of these set up in a 360 in a tower and they all broadcast out the same SSID and you want to make sure you lock into the one that you have the best line of sight with but for our purposes that's not really necessary. Alright, so both CPEs are configured. I am on this laptop right now, plugged directly into this CPE. So I have internet. I'm not going to run a speed test because both these CPEs are running through my test router here. So no matter what, you're only going to get 60 megabits through this ancient piece of crap. But that's just here to kind of segregate out my networks so I don't accidentally try to connect one of my own CPEs. But that is it for this low quality video. I'll see you guys in the next one when we actually deploy these or the router video or the router, the network switch review video on this switch and the eight port model. That might come out first. I'm not sure yet. But that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time.